first five years of first five years of experience where, where he have focused on delivery and then uh, he have uh, later he have worked with the financial management and the project customer uh, as well as the people management in the same company and thereafter he have taken up the management uh, uh, he have taken his shown a skill in the management as well as the productivity in the same company during this time he also received an, another excellent opportunity to attend a residential middle management development program supported by quintels at one of the prestigious institutes like indian institute of management ahmedabad india and this program gave him a uh, some management lessons and a lifetime networking opportunity across various industry leaders and management gurus. And uh, from since from 2008, uh, helped him not, not only focus on quality aspect, also he have uh, shown some uh, interest cultural aspect, and then he must state that all this helped to build and accelerate my professional growth uh, across multiple dimensions. Of course, we believe, so the wide uh, range of experience in the clinical, of course, the budding pharmacists, those who are from the various institutions, those who are eagerly waiting what I can choose for my profession in the, uh, in the future days. Of course, yes, this I believe, and of course we all, the APSC team, we believe this will be a fruitful uh, webinar for you guys. Yes, speak from the speaker. It's time for you to uh, get knowledge from our speaker. Without wasting his valuable time, I request Dr. Basar Patil, sir, please uh, keep present your talk. Over to sure. you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mansadipa. Uh, before I start, uh, can I start sharing my screen, please? Yes, please, sir. Okay. And uh, let me know if you can see the screen. We can, sir. Uh, no. Yes, it's, it's, it's visible. Uh, okay. First of all, thank you, everyone, and uh, uh, my apologies. Uh, yes, Dr. Mansa. Taking. Hear me okay, Dr. Mansa? Yes, no, can. No, we can. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, thank you, everyone, for the nice introduction. Uh, I'm not sure how much I did. Uh, something. I was just uh, having earlier chat with Dr. Joshi yesterday. There was a phone and uh, uh, I had sent messages. quite a few messages to my and something I wrote a blog which said something your self belief is greater than doubts of a thousand other people. And I think that's something I'm going to talk in today's session about that I, I, maybe uh, Dr. Deepa, are we able to meet all the participants? Yeah, uh, with your permission, uh, I request the audience uh, as well as delegates, those who are here, uh, please take this uh, legislation as in a serious way. Uh, may interrupt your, if you are uh, in a mute, if you're mute, your audio, it will be a grateful help for us. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I think, uh, today I'm going to talk about the passion that I'm carrying in the field of clinical research uh, for the last 25 years. And that passion is not because you know, it has given me loads of uh, career opportunities or monetary benefit at uh, traveling all these different countries. Uh, or in a certain, uh, I think it is all because I love the field of clinical research. So even if you know some of these monetary benefits, um, uh, the travel, it wasn't there, I would have still loved the clinical research profession. And I hope I want to just transfer some of the passion during the talk. Now, before I start, uh, you know, anyone, if you would like to sort of you know, uh, connect me with on LinkedIn, uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can scan the Q code, uh, happy to get connected. Uh, and on the uh, right-hand side, you will also see 
there is a small clinical research new channel on the Telegram, uh, which is again free. So anyone would like to hear the latest news in the field of clinical research, feel free to join that channel. And I have just uh, in the chat function added a link. Uh, so that's sort of a just not more than a minute or two survey, which if you can complete at the end of the session, that would help me to see how I was able to communicate with you all. Uh, is there anything you, know, you liked? And uh, uh, is there any other feedback for me uh, which will help me to improve my future sessions? So if you can please take that time, that would be great. And uh, I think Dr. Mansa Deepa did tell, you know, uh, please do ask questions. I would like to repeat that again. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to state there are no silly questions. Uh, probably there are silly answers. Uh, so uh, let's move on. I... And this is sort of you know, my little house in the uh, UK, just about 40 miles away from UK, uh, London. And what you see uh, in that little circle, that's my office uh, uh, from where I'm currently speaking. Uh, so it is just one of the rare scene um, when we get snow. So I just took the picture, uh, it just feels nice. Uh, now I have a few slides and uh, uh, as, I, as Dr. Deepa and others mentioned, uh, I have spent almost all my life working with the same organization uh, for the last 25 good years, uh, and I'm still working with the same company. It is just, I changed my locations uh, you know, from Ahmedabad to Mumbai, then I was in Bangalore, uh, then to Singapore. Uh, I was also in Vietnam, uh, Indonesia. I spent some time in Japan, the Australia, New Zealand, and now, uh, you know, since last seven years, moved to the UK. So, uh, although you know, I'm going to talk about the experiences, uh, just as a sort of disclaimer, uh, the opinion expressed in this presentation are my own views, not necessarily, you know, my company views. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, I'm just going to talk something unrelevant, but I just want to state that. Uh, so what we're going to discuss today, uh, I just want to talk to you about what is clinical research, what is not clinical research. Also, I think main topic, you know, what are the opportunities uh, for the clinical research uh, for the professionals like you? And then sort of moving into the qualifications required and then also understand. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah, there yeah. Everyone, please. Thank you. So, Any questions which uh, you can't uh, stop, please add them into chat function to address them. So, before I start, I just want to hear, I hope you can still use your chat function and uh, just wanted to give maybe 10 seconds. Do you all know? Uh, what is the major cause of death globally? And when I say major cause of death, we all hear you know, the news about COVID, the lives, every, you know, every country is losing because of COVID. We also hear you know, different research articles. So just wanted to take a quick pause. And if you can just put it in the chat function, in your opinion, which, which is the major killer of, uh, uh, you know, across the world in terms of death? So anyone would like to just put your, you know, in the chat function, which you think, is it COVID? Is it something else? Uh, is it a uh, uh, stroke or is it? Okay. Somebody said, uh, Dr. Anaga Sonar Hunger. Uh, very, very interesting. I really like that. Uh, smoking maybe, very nice. The Nabi, uh, Nabi, I think you're saying smoking is a major killer. I think very interesting question. So uh, I think some more quick answers are coming. But uh, if, if you see 
I think there is a notion everyone feels, uh, and I was just looking at this uh, article. Uh, usually I follow this out of my, again, my own passion outside of clinical research. Yesterday, I, I think around evening my time here in the UK, I looked at globally, we have close to 4.1 4 million deaths because of COVID. Uh, so 4.1, just to translate that in an Indian context, it's about 41 lakh deaths. Uh, which is a huge number and the you know this covid pandemic is still hitting us badly in its different form uh, uh, and these 41 lakh deaths are over a period of i would say a year and a half so you know covid started back in november 19, 19 uh, sorry 2019 and it is still continuing in different countries in different intensity uh, i also looked at the you know, the number of deaths occurred in India uh, as of yesterday from the statistics. And, you know, we have close to 4 lakh deaths because of COVID. So it's about like, you know, 41 lakhs globally and about, uh, you know, 4, 4 lakhs within India. So maybe you know, one tenth of those deaths occurred in India. Now, why I'm telling, because I've conducted few sessions and many times there is a belief saying that, oh, this is the major killer across the globe. And do we really believe, and I think you know, some of you said uh, in my previous session, I said, yes, COVID is the major killer. It is not that, and I want to show you some hard statistics. So uh, if you look at uh, this the world data in the year 2017, and I think uh, they do sort of data every four years. So the next data is going to come this year. But if you look at, the number of deaths by cause across the globe uh, in year 2017, uh, we have the number one killer, which is the cardiovascular disease, which are about 18 million deaths uh, of cause just in one year. Uh, and that is sort of number one killer. Versus what you see COVID, uh, over a period of year and a half, it just sort of, you know, I'm not, and again, please don't get me wrong. Uh, the number of deaths because of COVID are 4 million versus 18 million with the cardiovascular. So what I'm trying to say, COVID is the disease burden for the globe, but it is not amongst those top 10 category. There are many other diseases where still research is trying to find unmet medical need. Uh, cardiovascular is one of them. Cancer, somebody says smoking, yes. Uh, even I think somebody says hunger, which is sort of the nutritional deficiency. And I think the world is still grappling with that. Uh, and you know, some of the complications because of that, various psychiatric illnesses. Uh, so I think the point I'm saying, there are many, unfortunately, many other unmet medical needs, uh, which are still, uh, where still a lot of research needs to be done. I also now want to translate that. I think you, know, you may say like, this is the global data, but in India, how the picture looks like. Now, India, if you see, uh, this is again the same statistics at the same year. Cardiovascular disease, disease again tops the uh, you know the rank with close to 2.6 million deaths versus 0.4 million. So again, again you will see there are 10 times more killers which are surrounded by us, and research is still trying to find the effective treatment. And I think very sadly, apart from uh, the uh, these diseases. These kind of diseases are called as lifestyle diseases, affecting young population, which is supposed to be most productive population, bringing some income back in home, uh, also helping uh, the economy of the country. I think these young populations are being affected because of you know some of these top ten killer, which is another important thing wherein the research needs to take that accelerated pace. So uh, again, I, I will just quickly go through a couple of slides. Uh, you know, this is the, another like 2019 data. I got it from another source. You can see the ischemic heart disease, like, you know, um, within that cardiovascular, 16% of deaths occur just because of that globally. Stroke, the COPD, like the asthma, uh, lower respiratory tract infection, uh, the neonatal infection, somebody says, you know, because of the hunger. Again, I think this is form of that neonatal deficiency, uh, uh, you know, nutritional deficiency. So we have some uh, issues around that less developed countries. And uh, so, so I think, you know, why I'm telling you, I think this is where research needs to be done. 
and this is rare. I think you know the constant new therapies are being tested. They are safe and effective. And how this that is done? That's what we are going to do. Uh, learn uh, in my uh, sort of you know next few slides about the field of clinical research and uh, uh, how this is sort of you know helping uh, bringing some new therapies, medicines into the world market. Again, I think because you are pharmacy professionals, I'm not going to bore you. You know what is meant by the phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trial, how those are conducted. Uh, I think you know you have some understanding about that, uh, but at the same time, I do want to state here, uh, you know, whenever you know to bring a new molecule into the world market, right from it, uh, you know it gets originated in the lab, oops, you know, the chemical processes, all the way to the animal toxicity, first in man study, which is phase one, or then phase two, wherein we look at. Of the efficacy of the drug, the phase three, and finally drug gets approved. All that period, it ranges anywhere between 10 to 15 years. And I think the success rate sometimes is in a thousand compound you test in the lab, you end up with one successful candidate. And the cost of clinical research is soaring very, very high. So it ranges anywhere between 900 million US dollar to more than 1.82 dollars and i think if you look, if you look at that overall cost close to 70 to 80 percent cost is involved in the clinical research right from phase one to phase three study and i think this is sort of a fascinating thing uh, in terms of you know understanding how that everything works and you know it is that branch of healthcare you know which determines you know the safety more important safety and efficacy of medicine before they are brought into market because medicines not necessarily mean actual drug. It can be a treatment, uh, it can be a device, uh, or it can be a, a, you know, a diagnostic tool to relieve symptoms of the disease. Uh, hopefully, you know, you can still hear me okay. And uh, Dr. Manisha, please let me know if my voice is still audible and you can still see my screen on the web. If somebody can just um, you can follow uh, we, me. We can, we can see that uh, also, sir. Thank you. So, and I think I'll keep on asking to make sure, you know, I'm not getting lost because of the internet connectivity. And I think there are over 100 participants, which is good. So, uh, I think I'm going to talk to you about what is clinical research and what is not clinical research. I think this is something uh, uh, quite interesting. And many times when I speak to some of the industry, Cities. Uh, constantly, I think some uh, the clinical research and clinical practice, and these are two different things. Uh, and uh, explain that with some examples. So, uh, just give me a second. I'm trying to pull my screen a bit down because uh, it's blocking me. So, if you look at the clinical research, and clinical practice, uh, what I mean by that, clinical research is an experiment. And when I say experiment, these are clinical trials which are conducted on the medicines which are not yet launched into the world market. The safety and efficacy is yet to be established. So, uh, so it, it is still an experiment which uh, we need to consider. Versus clinical practice, it is an established treatment. What does that mean? You know, if, if you want to get treated today's world for, uh, say, uh, your fever, your tablet, it comes, it is an established treatment. Uh, there is enough research to demonstrate that it will relieve you from the fever. But uh, if you just consider maybe 100 years ago, when this paracetamol was put into a trial, it was an experiment that time, and it was not an established treatment because nobody knew whether that was helping time. So that's sort of one difference in the clinical research and clinical practice. Another clinical research that means the environment, what we have seen in the previous slide, you know, you have those very, very defined protocols which are part of those phase one, all the way to phase three clinical trials. Not everyone gets absorbed into that. There is a lot of critical, scientific aspect uh, in order to protect the safety and well-being of each participant uh, who gets absorbed into the study. So those are very well controlled. What is the clinical uh, which is done by the medical doctors, they are, you know, they conduct a practice with the 
uh, with the uh, with these treatments approved by the regulatory authorities. Uh, same way, as I said, clinical research, the primary aim is to establish safety and efficacy of the drug versus uh, the clinical, uh, if you look at the clinical practice, it is helping to treat the disease Subtle differences, uh, even though the clinical research and clinical practice, the medical doctors are involved, it is different. And I think sometimes that's where, uh, you know, you as a pharmacist, if you want to be, uh, if you want to enter into the field of clinical research, needs to know that. Uh, and I just want to spend very quickly, maybe two, three minutes, just to explain real example, uh, you know, research and clinical practice. Um, how sahib, sir? Uh, yes. Sir, excuse me, sir. Uh, you are not uh, clearly audible, sir. Oh, uh, can I put your uh, can you kindly put your uh, headphone uh, nearby? Yeah, let me do that. Let me do yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Give me a second. Uh, no, sir. Is it better now or not yet? Yes, yes, yes. It's better now. All right. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. And thank you. Thank you for and apologies. Uh, I think sometimes this technology helps, sometimes it does not. So I want to talk to you very quickly in just a couple of minutes about, you know, the uh, real life example. Uh, now, in the clinical research, we use terminology as an adverse event. And that is slightly uh, very much different from a side effect. And as I said, in the clinical research, we're still doing this as an experiment. So we still do not know, you know, uh, uh, what are the unwanted things associated with the trial medicine. Uh, so there is a term which is used as an adverse event. And uh, that adverse event is any, uh, any, any sort of unwanted thing which is happening to the subject, which may or may not have relationship with the study drug under investigation. So we've, I think you know, there was a study being conducted on a uh, Parkinson's disease trial uh, with the transdermal patch. And uh, during the trial, it was conducted in about 10 different countries across the globe. And we noticed uh, that trial associated with something peculiar, which is called uh, you know, as a injury occurred because of the dog bite. Now, uh, can some everyone please keep your phone on mute? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry for the interruption. Please, delegates, I request you. In the beginning itself, we have uh, in, uh, give a clear legislation. Please, if you want to give the uh, importance to the talk, please mute your audio system. Sorry for the interruption, uh, Patil sir. Not no no problem. Thank you. So I think you know we uh, as, as I was saying you know in that clinical trial we usually ask all the doctors to report everything which is unusual, uh, any medical condition which uh, or uh, you know uh, uh, unwanted effects. So as for that definition, we had some injuries because of the dog bite uh, across few patients in the. Uh, in this clinical trial. Now, you know, there are a lot of debate. Many doctors were saying what this dog bite has to do with the clinical research, uh, the injury occurred. And in you know, some of those cases where, you know, uh, in some countries, people were, you know, people have dogs at their pets. Uh, so they were just taking the dog for, uh, you know, a walk outside or at, in their house. And, you know, dog had, uh, you know, a dog bit, uh, you know, their owners. So that was one case, but in some cases, other countries, there are street dogs uh, who ended up biting you know, some of these clinical trial patients. And on the face of it, you feel it has no relation at all, uh, which is perfectly understandable. But you know, when this data was analyzed as a part of that phase two clinical trial, what we realized some interesting phenomena, uh, when that patch was applied, uh, it used to secrete peculiar hormones on, uh, on the skin layers, and that hormone ended up, you know, sort of having peculiar odor, which triggered dog to bite. So you can imagine, you know, I think some of these discoveries were possible because we collected this data, which we call as an adverse event, which normally, you know, we would not have done that because you would almost jump onto the conclusion saying, you know, uh, it, it has no relation. But then I think that's how some of these discovery come into place. This is how then you feel, uh, you know, you see some indications on the drug in the form of side effect. If you're taking this medicine, do not drive heavy machineries. If you're taking this drug, uh, you know, it, it will make you drowsy. 
in current vaccines, you will also see, uh, you know, uh, they say like you know, after taking vaccine, you will have sort of a fever, fatigue, uh, you have body ache for a, for a day or so, and it will subside down. So I think these these are the sort of you know uh, uh, things which are noticed as a part of that clinical research. So it is very important. We need to differentiate between adverse event and common side effect. And then you know through that collection of such adverse event data and clinical trial, you establish possible relationship through further analysis. And then you know some of those adverse events could become a side effect. So this is just an example. Now let me move on. How this clinical research sort of you know is interesting apart from you know giving something back to the society it is i think if you look at the clinical research as such again uh, it is uh, tra traditionally this clinical research was conducted into the western countries like the united states europe japan the uk and if you if i look at uh, probably less than 1% of clinical research, almost like none of that clinical research was conducted in uh, the other part of the country, which is, you know, sort of the Eastern world, the Asia. Asia. And if you just look at on the right hand, the right hand side of my screen, uh, almost like, you know, and this is the figure, I would say about 10 years ago, and even it was completely different 15 years ago when I started my career. Uh, so more than 50% of clinical research was done in the US, about 30% in Europe, and a couple of percentage in Asia. And now uh, with the advances, if you look at on the other hand, the population of India, China, and Indonesia, which are the top three of the five, uh, the top three populist countries of the world. And when I say top three, of course, in the United States probably comes number three or number four, but Indonesia and these countries are one of the top five. So the, if you consider population of these three countries together, which is more than 50%, now, only 1% clinical research is done in the 50% of population, and maybe you know, where the population is just 30%, 90% of clinical research is done there. And I think this is something uh, which is in the field of clinical research is an undiverse population. Uh, so the clinical research drug, which is tested in white population, we then use it in uh, the black or you know, the Asian population. And that's where sometimes you do not find the right efficacy, right dosing. And I think there is a real realization now, you, will, you must be hearing a lot of talk about diversity in clinical trial. And I think this is the reason why clinical research is coming to Asia region. It is not because, and I think there is a notion many times we feel uh, people are being used as guinea pig. Uh, it, the research is done unethical. Personally, having part of clinical research profession in the last 25 years and have, having seen some of these COVID vaccines getting developed almost every day and night in the last 18 months, I can vouch, you know, that I, and uh, probably I would be the first person to take that vaccine. Uh, so I think it is done in the most ethical way. I think it is just the way sometimes people look at that differently. But uh, I think you know we still need that clinical research to be done in you know this Asian population to make sure uh, you know drug tested in different ethnics, uh, uh, different race uh, races, and uh, in a, in another world I think that is also good for uh, for you as a professional so that you are able to see uh, the therapy which are going to come into the market ten years down the line you are getting that experience today. The doctors are getting that experience today. And I think this is, this is also going to bring loads of opportunities for you people if you want to become part of clinical research. So this is just an, another sort of, you know, real article I put down, uh, pulled it out from the US FDA website, a very sort of solid data uh, for the last sort of four years from 2015 to 2019. If you look at uh, out of those 300,000 clinical trial participants or patients in different clinical studies, uh, about 76% participants are from white region. You know, sort of some of those are like you know from the U.S. or the United States. So uh, uh, the white ethnic origin. Asian population is just 11%. And again, you know that Asian population also include. Uh, subjects recruited in sort of Asia, but the Asian population residing in other countries. So you can imagine, you know, sort of the research needs to be done more diverse. And I think this is where uh, this is taking a pace. And you will also see a lot of pharmaceutical companies are setting their base in uh, Asia. Now, important thing to understand uh, in within Asia, like, you know, if you look at those populist country, India, China, Indonesia, I personally believe India has still that upper hand the reason being 
and this will be surprising to you the language of uh, you know the uh, communication in india and when i say communication all our medic uh, the uh, professional degrees are taught in uh, the english language so all our communication in professional courses is in english uh, which is not the case in china which is not the case in japan uh, when i was in singapore 8 years ago i used to conduct my training courses to our office in japan in english but at the same time there was someone else a translator who used to translate that into japanese language so you see i think that english communication our awareness about english is definitely going to put us at that you know uh, cutting edge uh, at an advantage compared to china or india because you know we can communicate uh, uh, and therefore you know the, uh, we bring closer to that clinical research world where you know most of the communication is happening in english so the, i think this is another reason why i personally believe uh, india has that advantage uh, within that asian region and at the same time you know the clinical research is growing because of those other factor that i mentioned now i am also looking at the watch you heard about you know what is clinical research what is not you also looked at some of those you know why those opportunities are coming in and this is just sort of you know another slide just to show how that excellent opportunity is coming in the global clinical research market is more than 46 billion us dollar and because of the reasons i mentioned earlier you know uh, there are still unmet medical needs clinical research needs to happen uh, this research is going at the rate of almost like more than 5% growth and i can tell you this is the probably only industry i have seen which was very very active in fact more active last year despite the pandemic uh, you have seen you know some of this like in you know, hotel industry the uh, uh, tourism industry uh, the airline industry, they have almost come to a standstill uh, with people losing the job. And at the same time, uh, I think people like me, we have been working almost like twice, twice the time uh, normally we would do uh, because, you know, we had a job at hand. We know, you know, there are 100,000 people dying every day and we need to bring something to, the, uh, to, uh, to them in the form of vaccine or COVID treatment. So this is sort of growing. Uh, you and uh, this growth is happening everywhere. However, uh, there is a big gap with the skill required. And I think I have been in discussion various sort of, you know, the university uh, uh, professors or uh, you know, academicians back in India, even here in the UK. I gave similar talk to a couple of colleges, King's College in London, as well as when I was in Singapore, uh, I gave a few speeches to the National University of Singapore. And when I look at the curriculum in the pharmacy, uh, sadly, I feel some of that curriculum is not meeting the needs what industry is looking at in terms of clinical research profession. And you know, you will see some of these you know opportunities. The, uh, and of course, these are old figures. But just to give an example, when we started uh, the quintiles this is an organization uh, in india india about in 96 uh, i was one of those top you know number 10 employee or one of one of the 10 employees which were part of the organization that time so we just i think this is an american company uh, we were about 10000 employees globally out of 10000 there were just 10 employees in india if you see today's condition we are close to i think 75000 employees across to uh, you know 150 different countries but out of, out of that 75000 close to 20000 employees are based just in india in about 10 different locations so that's the growth in terms of number of employees and the reason i'm saying you know the, the even though the growth has seen everywhere that 5% more rapid growth is happening in India, and that is going to bring a lot of job opportunities. And this is just one example of that clinical research organization. There are many others. There are many other pharmaceutical companies who are building their uh, research units back in India. So this, this is just a slide talks about, you know, what are those different roles? And, you know, I'm taking this fast forward, but, you know, uh, maybe I can talk maybe just another hour just to explain what are these roles. But there are various roles in the clinical research, you know, starting with the clinical operation, wherein you interact with the doctors, you make sure the data is co uh, collected accurately, patients' rights and uh, well-being are protected. Then you go into that project project management wherein you know you'd start overseeing clinical trial program uh, then also you look at the regulatory affairs you know wherein how the protocols are designed how the data is submitted uh, the medical monitoring you know wherein they look at the safety aspect 
the business development, you know, which is something, you know, uh, uh, how you can, uh, you know, look at the company profitability or, you know, sell your uh, services. The clinical research hospitals, you know, where the research is actually conducted, there are lots of roles available there. The pharmacovigilance, I think you may have seen right now, this COVID vaccines, you know, we are conducting that additional safety data. Uh, the data also needs to be analyzed. So we also have some of those data management, biostatistician, loads of opportunities, the central laboratory services, the quality assurance. So I think these are the roles, you know, you can aspire uh, if you want to be part of clinical research and growth within individual function is tremendous. And you can also move around from world role to another, which is what I have done you know, in the last 25 years. I can say you know, I have managed almost mo most of those roles as a part of my career growth, uh, not just in one country, uh, one region, but almost like in the three different continents. So uh, I think I'm, I'm also looking at the watch sort of probably, I just need about 10 minutes and we will then open it for Q&A. Uh, but Dr. Manasa and uh, Dr. Joshi, can you still hear me okay? Is my voice audible? Just wanted to take a quick sound check. Everything yes. is clear, sir. Please yes, carry on. Thank yeah, you. Please, please proceed. Okay. okay. And hopefully I'm not going too fast, but if I am, uh, please give me a sign. Okay. It's fine, sir. All right. So I think we have seen about clinical research, what is, what is not. Is this the real field that I want to make career in? You also have looked at that. Now let's quickly look at what are the skills required. And I think this is where, as I said, you know, when I was sort of looking at, uh, as an industry, when we look at who we want to recruit, uh, generally, I think, you know, the life science graduates, uh, which could be like, you know, microbiologist, pharmacist, medical graduate, postgraduates in like, you know, B farm, M farm, PhDs, farm Ds, MBBS, uh, even nursing professionals. Now, I think you will also see, personally, I, again, you will feel I'm a bit biased, but pharmacy has that advantage because we not only know about the pharmacology part, we, but we also know about the drug development process. We are very close to that drug development process, the manufacturing part. At the same time, we are also very close to pharmacology, which is, which is where I feel personally we are ideal suited amongst different other life science courses, something you should be proud of it. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, last year, uh, when you know this lot of research was done, uh, the Prime Minister of UK, uh, he just you know in one of his speech he mentioned many times we end up thanking doctors, nurses, key workers, but there is a profession which normally we don't see, uh, but they work behind the scene. And he mentioned about pharmacists, you know, the clinical research organization. He said right now everyone is in a lockdown inside the house, and you know even personally, quite honestly, the place where I live. Uh, you know, I, I'm surrounded by all by some British families. Uh, they were not aware about, you know, what I do. But when, you know, this COVID pandemic started, almost like, you know, uh, every, every time when I used to go out, uh, there used to be a question in their mark, wow, uh, you know, uh, when the vaccine is going to come, uh, probably you're part of that clinical research. So are you aware? And I think, uh, so, so I think th th this is something he mentioned, the prime minister, this is the field which is not spoken, but they have become paramount important now. And, uh, uh, you know, we all our eyes are on them that, you know, something will happen as a part of the clinical journey. And that's what you have seen now. We have some vaccines in, in the play. So apart from this qualification, you also need a few other areas. You need to know the knowledge of clinical, how clinical trials are conducted, the efficacy aspect, the safety aspect. What is different from phase one to phase two to phase three? What is the different? What is meant by good, good clinical practice? Uh, what are the what is the role of ethics committee, regulatory authorities in clinical research? Uh, is this just the you know working in the lab? What is the importance of documentation? How you can apply the technology? And I think nowadays you must be hearing. Uh, on one hand, I'm saying you know the research takes about ten to fifteen years, and on the other other hand, I'm also saying we were able to bring this vaccine just in a span of one year to the world market. How that is possible? Uh, is that really safe? We are also hearing a lot, you know, that I'm not going to take vaccine. In fact, I myself uh, was behind my mother, who is back in India, to pursue it, uh, her, you know, please, can you please take vaccine? And, you know, she was telling me, please don't take vaccine because, you know, it will make you important. Uh,
can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Sorry. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, everyone is talking, as, as I was saying, like, you know, everyone is talking about how this vaccine came so fast, but I think there has been a lot of process going in, the application of technology got into place. So in the traditional world, uh, the clinical research was conducted in a way patient used to visit hospital, but last year, uh, with, the bring, you know, with the use of this technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Lean Six Sigma principle, the decentralization of clinical trial happened and clinical trial started getting closer to the patient. And again, you know, there is a separate session when I'm happy to talk about how that really happened. But because of the technology, we were able to accelerate that clinical research. And remember, these vaccines, they haven't gone, got the formal approval from regulatory agency. This is an emergency use approval, uh, wherein we know that this is definitely safe, but we still want to collect the additional data. Uh, at the same time, you know, uh, we have now enough data to demonstrate this vaccine is safe, this is effective, and there is no reason, uh, you know, why one shouldn't take that. So again, coming back, I think these are the gaps which probably you don't learn in the academics. You know, what is the concept of FEMA, Kaizen principle, or 5i analysis? And I think the, what are the different regulations of clinical research in terms of European regulations, in terms of MHRA in the UK, in terms of Japanese guidelines, in terms of US FDA. And I think this is where these are huge gaps which uh, I think needs to be filled in. And I think this is where the way, as I see, uh, there are some courses available and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, so, you know, as an academician, you definitely, you have those basic skill sets in terms of, you know, your awareness about pharmacy profession. Uh, and, you know, if you couple that with some of these additional skills, which is something definitely you can learn, uh, you, you can make yourself sort of, you know, one of the best clinical research professional and be part of this industry. So uh, I'm just going to talk to you about, you know, these different regulations, maybe, again, you know, won't go through that, but this is just to give you an idea uh, the the different regulations, the field of good clinical practice, uh, and uh, just sort of you know talk to you about there are different courses available if you want to uh, you know uh, look at that and maybe you know happy I have sort of two minutes clip just to show you uh, one of that course if uh, anyone is interested I'm happy to talk uh, so again you know you can please you know complete your uh, my, the feedback form. And uh, uh, just you know, uh, let let uh, let me know. You know, happy to uh, again talk to small group of people just to introduce that course and see uh, you know if somebody wants to take that course. So you know, in any of that course, uh, uh, you need to have that right course. At the same time, it is not just textbook knowledge, but you know, le learning from some of those experiences. And at the same time, uh, making sure you're not just learning the Indian guidelines of GCP, you're not just learning the UK guidelines, but getting that holistic perspective and make sure, uh, you know, you also learn the latest knowledge. So as I said, uh, the clinical research is changing very rapidly. So, you know, uh, uh, with this decentralization of clinical trials, uh, there is a buzzword which is now coming up, DCT, virtual clinical trial decentralized clinical trial so we are using uh, our you know this ethical principle still but applying this technology and making clinical research faster at the same time more safer uh, so i think you know what i'm going to do uh, if uh, if uh, dr mansa if you have just 2 minutes i just want to walk through a short 2 minute uh, video and then we will open for q and a if that's please, okay please with take you take your own time no issues all right okay so hopefully, I think yeah, uh, my voice is still audible and, you know, please keep those questions coming in. Uh, I'm just going to uh, put the uh, video link and uh, probably I think I will need to change my screen. So give me a second. Uh, you, Dr. Mansa, you are still probably seeing my slide, right? right? And not the video. No, no, no. Okay. So I need to stop. And I will start uh, start sharing again my internet browser. So give me a second, please. I'm going to share again. Can you see my internet browser now? If yes, can... yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, 
yeah hope uh, you know it's just about two and a half minute video and then uh we will take q a so please keep your questions coming in we are providing a quick summary of our six-month part-time certification course in clinical research in this video by completing this fully integrated course students will acquire a good understanding of the theory as well as the practical aspects of clinical trials and will have an in-depth training related to clinical research processes systems technology and overall methodology the course will cover clinical trial requirements from key regulatory authorities and guidelines as follows. International Conference on Harmonization Good Clinical Practice ICH, GCP. European Medicines Agency EMA. Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency UK MHRA. United States Food and Drug Administration US FDA. Pharmaceuticals and Medical Devices Agency PMDA Japan World Health Organization WHO The Central Drug Standard Control Organization India CDSCO One more aim of this course is also to provide a forum for the nurturing of future global leaders in clinical trials to drive healthcare forward in this 21st century and beyond We will use our GRIP model that is gain retain improve and polish Teaching will be delivered virtually and face-to-face -face lectures where possible with the help of national and international faculty and we will also combine that with tutorials and group work. Every week, the students will receive around two to three hours of supported study and will be expected to complete around two to three hours self-directed study. The curriculum comprises 20 plus compulsory modules of varying length and intensity. All students will receive access to a personalized virtual learning platform, which will help them learn GCP concepts in a friendly environment and track their own progress. This platform will also guide them throughout their learning journey by identifying their strengths as well as areas they need to acquire additional skills. It does not stop here. The artificial intelligence and machine learning concepts built within this platform will help students to acquire such skills without taking any additional stress of classroom type environment. Yes, we have made learning easy and this platform will make sure your learning journey will be an easy ride. After successful completion of this course, the students will receive a certification from GCP Compass UK Limited, which is accredited by Accreditation Council for Clinical Research Education a renowned accreditation body in the United States. Thank you for listening and for further inquiries please contact us at gcpcompass at outlook.com or visit our website www.gcpcompass.com. Bye for now and I will see you there soon. We are providing a quick... Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing now and uh, uh, I will just add the link uh, as a feedback to the survey once again into the chat. So please, you know, take your time, complete the survey, uh, how you feel about the session. And with that note, uh, over back to you, Dr. Mansadipa, and we can take some questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sahib Patil, sir. It is really, really a very informative. I think now the students, uh, from the students' community, those who are joined as a delegate of today's webinar, probably they might have been received a wonderful idea of what uh, if, the, the, if the field of profession where they are going to focus, if as a data scientist or analyst, what kind of role they have to be, uh, of course, whatever the ideas they gain from a book or the syllabus oriented. So how they have to develop uh, their skills and all, probably they could have been uh, uh, got uh, uh, this house for the q a so um, uh, for this i request uh, dr mahendra singh ratosa to chair the session for the q a over to you ratosa uh, 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 unmute your unmute your audio sir ratosa sir unmute your audio unmute your audio yeah, we are unable to hear you. Oh, I think he's saying probably not permitted. So. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're not permitted. Yeah. Okay. One minute. Yes, please. Okay. 
And I, I think mean, in the meantime, yeah, in the meantime, uh, the audio yeah, is becoming audible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I'm, am I audible? Uh, yes, yes, we are yeah. audible, sir. So, uh, yeah, please read the question so that our speaker can answer uh, one of the uh, other uh, for uh, yeah. addressing the questions to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, thank you, uh, Patil sir, for this nice presentation. I was uh, hearing this uh, from the beginning uh, till end. And uh, there are some questions from the audience. And probably this is uh, one of the questions that I would like to take from the bottom one. That is, uh, kindly put some light on the artificial intelligence uh, in clinical trials and the drug discovery process. This is a question from uh, Mr. Anand Sheikh, Adnan Sheikh. Okay. Okay, yeah. So I think you know, very excellent question and uh, something I am glad somebody asked. Now, you know, those I think all of us have studied some history, uh, and I just want to take you back. You know, in our secondary school days, and you know, you may have heard the industry revolution. You know how the steam engine changed to the uh, you know sort of electric engine, then to sort of a gas engine, and now you know, the world of uh, you know these robotics the uh, automatic cars, the, you know, uh, the self, uh, self-driving cars. And I think that's all the evolution it is considered as industry revolution four, which everyone is. And one of, as the artificial intel, in, the intelligence is considered as, you know, bringing that industry revolution four, which is where, you know, an example of artificial intelligence is, you know, the driverless cars. And I'm just giving you that example. Uh, same concept, similar concepts are being got into clinical trial. Uh, actually, I have. I'm just going to give another talk, just in another half an hour, to another group. Uh, separate session on artificial intelligence, the use of artificial intel intelligence in clinical trial. And uh, maybe I'm going to say what I'm going to talk to them for two hours. I will say in maybe two three minutes. So, few examples of artificial intelligence right now. Uh, we have, you know, uh, in earlier days in the clinical trial, the ECG said, you, know, you need to study the ECGs uh, of all the clinical trial patients as one of the criteria and make sure those ECGs are read by the same doctor. So you can imagine clinical trials are conducted in 100 different hospitals in 50 different countries, but then their ECG recordings will send by post or courier uh, to one reader. Uh, maybe in the uh, you know, United States, and that radiograph would read that just to bring that consistency because one person is reading in the same way. That was the way of doing that. Now, what is happening? You have these small uh, portable recorders, ECG machines, which are given to the, each hospital. As soon as ECG gets recorded, at the same time, somebody sitting in the US can see the recording, how it is getting recorded, and they can analyze that not waiting for two months till the time ECG gets to the uh, to them. It is real time analysis. Now, how that is helping? You know, it is helping. Just again, another example. Currently, this COVID vaccine, as I said, it is. You know, everyone has got the emergency use approval. When I got my COVID vaccine, uh, three about uh, six weeks ago, we in in here in the UK we have you know given that national health service app on our mobile. So on our app. We immediately we can record any adverse any, any side effects saying that i'm having fever i'm feeling uh, a bit dizzy so all those adverse events are uh, the side effects are collected on real time so at the end of the day that company knows that there were about 10 million doses of vaccine given in the us and uk out of 10 million doses we are seeing 100 people impacted with fever 100 had body ache so this is the real time pharmacovigilance data which in the previous cases, it used to take three, four months to collect that data. Now this is happening on online. And this is where, you know, research, which used to happen 10, 15 years, now it is accelerating fast. These are the concept of you know, bringing that concept of artificial intelligence, machine learning. Again, in terms of, if you look at, uh, we also did uh, in the drug dis discovery part, they're also using what uh, some of these technologies to see based on the chemical structure of molecule. Say again, you know, how this vaccine came into picture. This uh, and the concept of artificial intelligence was brought into picture again. This virus is not new to scientists. If you look at the COVID-2 virus, it is the family of virus of SARS Mars. flu, which Mars. we had experience in 2001. So it is sort of the MERS syndrome, Middle East Africa syndrome. 
the Ebola. So this is the virus, the family of that virus. And then we got to, I think scientists had knowledge of that and they just accelerated, okay, what is their biology? What is their pathology? And then they accelerated with the medical chemical modeling and got that, you know, the sequencing done. And they were able to do that just in a matter of weeks. And then you had these different pharma companies, they use their, uh, you know, sort of scientists, their uh, drug delivery, uh, uh, drug development centers to bring this vaccine. So these are, again, you know, very few examples. Even, for example, the x-rays right now, if you have the x-ray of, a, uh, say, uh, the uh, images of a cancer patient, you are able to sort of predict how fast this disease may progress based on other conditions of that. And therefore, you can almost like predict what may happen and therefore you know you can start uh, you know maybe adjusting the dose of medic medications right now so these are few examples how this you know concept of artificial intelligence there is a new term called as machine learning deep learning uh, even uh, the neural processing network uh, these are the new, new nuances coming up and they are going up very fast and unfortunately again as i say uh, some of these are not taught in the university so yes. apologies again you know with due respect to all the professors uh, but you know something needs to happen uh, to bring uh, you know this relevance back into the academics yeah, I hope uh, this question is nicely answered and uh, very true, sir. Uh, this actually, we are not teaching in our academic curriculum this artificial intelligence and a few other terms. I think the majority of us have a first, uh, listen, first time, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Far, so there are really, this is a good insight that you have given here. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we are having the uh, another uh, question. Uh, yeah. This is from uh, Dr. A. A. Ganachandran, sir. And he is saying uh, that asking that will there any adverse event turned to the toxic effects in your clinical research practice and how you were able to overcome such toxic effect this was the question asked from the senior professor of uh, yeah again very relevant and very and again i'll give the same example uh, you may or may not have heard about uh, you know when uh, who declared COVID pandemic on March 15, if my memory serves well, 2020. Yes. In India, At the same day, on the same day, late night, uh, United States government, the public uh, and the private partnership, like you know, pharmaceutical company CEOs, uh, some of the people like you know the worlds of Microsoft, Google, Apple, uh, you know, they, they, they had sort of an uh, informal gathering. And then they made a resolution. We need to come. Uh, with vaccine about 300 million doses by January 2021. So that was the aim. And then they called this and probably like, I have another session actually what is called as operation warp speed. So we need to accelerate clinical research. We do not have time. One single day delay in bringing this vaccine is causing 100,000 lives. Our economy is completely shut down and we cannot continue with that. So it was almost like, you know, uh, we were told it is your civic responsibility. It is not you have, to, you, you have to do for money. It is your civic responsibility because, you know, some of those people who are dying, maybe, you know, they are, they are your close ones, your mother, father, sister. And I think this is where uh, they came up with that while clinical research needs to be done fast, you cannot cut the corners. It needs to be safe. It cannot be unsafe. So they gave about 10 billion US dollar funding to 10 companies. Uh, and, you know, Janssen was one of them, AstraZeneca, the Oxford University. There were a couple of companies like GSK and Merck. They also received the funding. But, you know, in December, I think November 2021, last year, they stopped the program of, you know, their, their vaccine development because they felt they are not achieving the desired level of efficacy and uh, they do not have adequate data. So I think you know, some of these uh, things get discovered during that clinical research and then identified at an early stage. And that's how uh, you will also see the development of those uh, GSK, uh, GlaxoSmithKline and Merck, they announced they're not going to develop that vaccine further until they collect more evidence. I will give you one more example. You may have heard about AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, okay. The Covishield was put yeah. on temporary hold mm -hmm. in the US, yes. in UK. Yeah. And there was a lot of talk saying that, you know, it is, is it unsafe? But what happened? Again, I want to give you a real ground picture out of 76 million doses which were administered back in february across the globe uh, the uh, uh, pharmaceutical company observed there were about 16 deaths occurred the patient somebody took the vaccine out of 6, 76 million 16 people died now if you look at 16 people among 760 lakh very small number 
even if you go and check paracetamol drug, you will find indications saying that there is a chance of one in million uh, patient may ex experience serious adverse event. Uh, but then, you know, immediately they looked at that and they found uh, the the major cause of the uh, cause of death because of the uh, uh, the, the clot formation, and again they found that clot formation was more in the younger population, and those people who had concurrent illnesses, somebody was battling cancer, somebody was diabetic, so it was not just because of vaccine, it was because of these other little things, and therefore they came saying that it is still safe, the risk benefit ratio, mm -hmm. and at the same time to be on safer side, they stopped. They recommended, so here in UK, as the, the UK government has recommended, uh, try and avoid give this vaccine below 13 years, 30 years of age group. Now, again, that doesn't mean it is not uh, safe. It is just, we are collecting additional data. Even last year, the preg vaccine was uh, contraindicated for pregnancy. Now we have additional data to prove this is safe. So you will see like you know, some of these new things will come up. So to address your point, Yes, you know, there are some of those toxic effects, uh, but you know, they're identified at an early stage. And this is where the advances of technology coming in to track them earlier and do something about it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I think uh, this question is uh, um, covered and uh, the whole aspects uh, of Ganasimha himself. And uh, again, uh, this is a, there's a question that he's asking about your opinion uh, about the superimposed vaccines. And uh, you, will you please give some uh, opinion about that, that in the non-immunocompromised individuals, uh, what are uh, about the side effects, adverse effects, what is your opinion about that? Yeah. Uh, now, I think, you know, in terms of the way adverse, but I think this is like, you know, probably I think you people are more like, you know, great accommodation, academician and know more than sort of me because I left there, you know, studying. But the way it works, and I think this is the beauty of science and clinical research, uh, why you know, somebody gets fever after taking vaccine, but not the other person. And there are a lot of things, you know, which is again identified as a part of clinical research. Uh, you know, uh, the, the way our you know, body behaves is different because we eat different food. We have different habitat. Uh, some people are smoker. Some people are, you know, drink alcohol. Uh, some people you know, are fat, some are thin. Uh, some had family history and or somebody is from white uh, origin. Uh, somebody is like from black or a different ethnic origin. So all these are, I think, factor play, uh, you know, play. And, and on the top of that, you also had, uh, you know, some of those concurrent illnesses that each one of us having. So uh, again, I, I read an interesting article just yesterday. You talked about immuno, uh, you know, uh, should, and there is a debate going on right now. As a part of clinical trial last year, uh, you know, cancer patients were not enrolled, the mm -hmm. HIV patients, because their immunity already compromised. And we didn't want to add that. So there is a talk going on to generate more data. We should have cancer patient part of actual clinical trial. Again, if you look at the cancers, uh, cancer trials are the only trials where first in man study is conducted on cancer patient. All other diseases, we take healthy human volunteers. So again, I think uh, in the clinical science, you have to weigh the risk and benefit. So, you know, in terms of coming back to your question, uh, can I give this vaccine to somebody whose immunity is already compromised? And uh, do I need to give that because, you know, I have to protect him, uh, he or she will otherwise, uh, ha, you know, uh, the risk is more versus, you know, the side effects of the drugs. And if, if the answer is, Yes, you know, uh, for now, we need to give vaccine to this person because otherwise the risk to his or her life is a lot more than not giving the vaccine. So I think there is sort of, you know, uh, it's, it's a complex phenomena. And again, interesting thing, if you look at the uh, AstraZeneca and uh, Moderna vaccine, in particular, we have identified AstraZeneca vaccine, Covishield with the first dose, you have those major side effects, fever, body ache on the second day. In fact, I was almost lying on the bed uh, uh, but on the second dose, I was perfectly fine. However, uh, so some of my friends who received Moderna vaccine, they, they were absolutely fine with the first dose. But with the second dose, because again, the technology is used in the, each of those vaccines, like an mRNA, and those are different technology. So again, coming back to the question, uh, there, are, there is a lot of research being done. Which of the technology is good for the patients who are already immunosuppressed because of other illnesses going on and is there a particular group of vaccine needs to be given to them uh, to fight against covid so one uh, 
so uh, ma'am uh, can we continue with the time is permitting us uh, yeah uh, i Mansa? think you know, i have probably another 10 minutes so we can go ahead because yeah. i need to start with another session at 8:30 and then i have third one uh, which is going to start late okay, in the afternoon uh, my time so, uh, sorry we, uh, i think i think we will uh, accomplish this thing uh, by this uh, last question i would address that uh, some uh, arul kumaran uh, mr he is asking that can you say something about the electronic clinical assessment very good question very nice question uh it is called as ecowa electronic clinical outcome assessment and i will give, like to give another real example so this is in the traditional world research was done paper based and what i can mean so if you again think about all this phase 1 to phase 3 clinical trial data when this data is actually submitted to regulatory agencies and think about like i'm talking about 30 years back literally it used to be packed in you know maybe about 15 20 big trucks and submitted to the regulatory office so you can consider like an a4 size page the booklets which will be packed into about 15 big trucks that's the volume of data and then somebody has to go through that in order to give approval it's very very time consuming exercise and then somebody has to analyze so right now the concept of electronic clinical outcome assessment has come in what does that mean and this is what happened uh, somebody ask about artificial intelligence machine learning uh, we as a part of clinical trial there is something called as quality of life questionnaire patients are asked some questionnaires you know just like as i gave an example you took vaccine now whenever you have adverse event can you report that so for the first uh, not i wouldn't say first time but you know we started using this electronic patient diaries so patients were given given electronic diaries on their mobile devices so as you know as they took the vaccine shot they were asked okay every day maybe like you know once in the morning then in the afternoon then in the evening you have to record your symptoms even to say like i'm perfectly fine or i have slight fever or you know maybe i had broken tooth again remember not necessarily related to study drug but you know i just had or i was admitted so you record that so they were given that electronic diary and this is what is called as electronic outcome okay. assessment ecowa the new term coming in which is advances of technology wherein the idea is how you can collect data faster and how you can analyze with the techniques of artificial intelligence so that as i said within a matter of few days we were able to come and say you know the company was able to come and astrazeneca and confident to say yes we know there are 16 deaths but at the same time we know the causal relationship is not because of covid uh, it is something else and then they were able to analyze that with this technique so this is sort of an another good concept electronic clinical outcome assessment which is called as ecowa coming up the electronic health record that's another thing which is coming up and this is helping us to take the you know accelerate the pace of clinical research yeah so uh, i think the, all the questions are answered so uh, would like to uh, narrate uh, this uh, talk of uh, dr bausar patil uh, it is a very fantastic one in a couple of minutes i will uh, do that yeah so thank you doctor uh, yeah uh, so yeah thank uh, you doctor thought yes yeah. please and uh, really it's a very very informative session a real uh, thing like uh, the students uh, community what they have to understand that's from the book they have to come now out and they have to learn uh, the questionnaire is q and a session what it gives a for the more idea about that uh, the soft skills what are the soft skills they have to prepare when before they get into the industry uh, i think uh, a very clearly transparent way here answer thank you for that uh, uh patil sir and now uh, moving to the felicitation of our today's speaker for the i request uh, dr atul to hand over uh, the token of love and appreciation with a certificate to our today's speaker dr atul over to you yes sir uh, so patil sir uh, this is this is with a pleasure and uh, it was really one of the fantastic talks i uh, heard and uh, it was very knowledge insight so kindly accept this uh, certificate uh, of appreciation from the apsc and uh, it is my pleasure to be part of this event and uh, i am really very thankful uh, to the president uh, dr milin palle sir uh, dr yes. sir pakoda sir uh, joshi sir uh, for providing me such uh, opportunity
Yeah, before we wind up the session, thank you, Dr. Patil, sir. Uh, there is a one obligation from our, our side. We understand you are uh, uh, busy with the next schedule of meeting. Uh, we want to, uh, if we, we would like to, uh, I, I mean, request you to pick a one a best question from that we want to uh, uh, award a best delegate award for this session so we yeah. request you to take a few few more moments to uh, to pick sure uh, thank you and i think probably you are yeah. making me nervous yes. uh, so, <laughs> but uh, and I, I, I again you know you may feel biased but i think all are excellent questions so you know it, there is nothing you know i can uh, say and these are really relevant questions uh, one thing i before i sort of going to feel i just felt maybe one of the questions stood out but I, I, again i want to sincerely tell each one of you uh, as a, on one hand even though i'm saying you know you have excellent degree there are some skill gaps but <laughs> My sincere request, don't think that means you, sh you cannot become clinical research professional. I have studied myself from a small village. I think I was talking to Dr. Parley. Uh, you know, Karadi is my native place, but even my, my native place is further 35 kilometers. And right now that is fully flooded. Even, you know, during these days, buses do not ply to that place. And that's the place even, you know, uh, some of my primary education was like be, uh, below the tree you know there were no proper schools uh, so you know some of these like you know uh, cows and buffaloes used to you know go uh, to the forest to eat the grass and we used to their place to study so i think it was but uh, the point i'm saying i think uh, i still had the passion i wanted to do something different uh, i do not look good probably i do not speak good english but it i with that passion i still reached uh, from there to here and it is great sense of satisfaction. Uh, I'm talking to you. It, it also comes with a passion. And uh, if I have reached from that small village from there to here, uh, I think everyone here, I can still see there are about 128 participants. Each one of you have that ability. So, you know, keep that fire within. And, you know, if you have will, you will definitely find a way. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, uh, Dr. Mans, I just felt, I think the question which was asked about the artificial intelligence, and if I see the name correctly, Dr. I think Adnan, Adnan, Adnan Sheikh. Sheikh. Yes, sir. Adnan yeah. Sheikh. So that was, I think, probably an excellent question. And that also shows, I think, uh, that somebody is hearing my talk. Uh, and also sort of following. There were a lot of follow-up questions that ECOA and you know, all those are good questions, but I think that is a good trigger point. Uh, so again, you know, uh, keep your thinking hat on and sometime you never know. Uh, you can be one of the leading professional and you can be me in just a few years time. Yes, this question was taken as a master's topic uh, for his dissertation. Uh, that uh, this is in sense to some students. Yeah. 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 And again, you know, maybe I'm happy to talk about that. It is a very, very fascinating field. I'm very passionate. And in fact, the decentralization of clinical trials. So, if there is an interest, uh, happy to come on to another forum and talk about that. Yeah. There is a one uh, obligation, uh, take it as this is an obligation from our APSC team, uh, like uh, uh, if you, if you, if you uh, in, show some interest to show them, uh, take up some of the students uh, through the APSC and we are having the such, certain such kind of uh, future plans in our APSC uh, to begin with the mentorship programs. So uh, we uh, request you uh, find some good uh, candidates from our side. If, you can, I think the students can, community can get the benefit of. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, um, yeah. um, your voice is breaking. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is I'm audible? Right is I'm audible? Yeah, right yes, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we 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 from the APSC I want to put obligation here that uh, please uh, uh, in the future days forthcoming days we are planning for going with the mentorship program uh, whom of the speakers if they come come across to give a talk. Uh, uh, if you ap appreciate or say like give the mentorship uh, to be a mentee uh, for that uh, students community and definitely it will be a great help for. Uh, their set of path in the profession. Thank you. With this, uh, thank you once again. Uh, I request uh, uh, Professor Wakade sir to present our today's uh, uh, best delegate, uh, which goes to Madam Adnan Shai. Uh, if I'm not, I'm sorry, Mr. Adnan, I'm, whether I'm pronouncing in the right way or I do not know. I request 
today's winner. Congratulations, Adnan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Adnan, congratulations. Uh, Vakadi, sir, unmute, unmute your audio. No, you will yeah. submit, then you will do it. Yeah. So I think the same problem is facing. Yeah, everyone, I think today there is a huge <laughs> number of uh, webinar which is going, but still, uh, Patil, sir, you can see that uh, there are more number of participants, uh, with those who have shown interest, obviously, in every Just to give only the research, nothing else, because you see, like uh, even more than 200, I think, cross 350 participants over uh, the even the online as well as the YouTube. They have joined to hear your talk. Thank you once again. Uh, I request uh, Professor Parlisa to give a presidential remarks over about today's webinar. Parlisa, <laughs> over to you. So that we can hear you. Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, am I unable to? Are you able to hear me now? Yes, no. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Uh, it had been really a wonderful talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bausai Patil. See, uh, it's very motivating, you know. Uh, he talked of Karad and village from Karad. Let me tell the audience yes, my birthplace is Karad. My basic B farm degree is from Government College Karad. And my roommates used to come walking, bare feet, no chappals, imagine, with tiffin packed from their home. Such was the village background. Today, it's all flooded, it's underwater, there are no buses flying. And uh, Bhausai Patil has grown, travel all over the world, being educated from this place. And uh, he knows what's what in the world. I'll tell you, uh, in Marathi, Bhau means bhaiya, elder brother. And sahib, you know, saab. So even the name speaks, that uh, simple name, Patil is a very common name. And uh, he says everything is possible. Have fire within. You may not be good in English. You may not be good in technology. You may not be good at subject. But if you have that passion, if you feel you can do it, if you are ready to work for it, everything is possible, just everything. And clinical trials is an in thing. Uh, he has rightly said that uh, the Asian countries, particularly China and India, cover almost 50% of the world population, but only 1% of clinical trials are done. And 90% of the clinical trials are done in the countries where the population is less than 10%. So we have an opportunity. This is an area where in coming years, we are going to have pharmacies being employed by virtue of the knowledge we have, the training we have. See, life sciences, microbiologists, parasitologists, biotechnologists do not know what is a drug. They do not know what is drug manufacturing. They do not know anything about quality. We know it. We know what's manufacturing. We know what is drug testing. We know what is assurance. And we know pharmacology of it. So we are best suited for clinical trials. And uh, earlier, it used to take 10 to 15 years to develop a new molecule and bring it to the market. With the advent of technology, number of years have been reduced. And what this COVID-19 has told us, what it has taught us, within eight months, eight vaccines have come in the market. In eight months, eight vaccines have come in the market. And the quality is not compromised. The speaker rightly said he would be the first one vouch for the vaccine because so described, so comprehensive, so careful, systematic, the trials are carried out. They are all safe. When it has come out in eight months, it only means we do not know how long the effect of the vaccine would last. But we know about its efficacy. We are sure about its safety. And this is what, you know, COVID shield and other vaccines have proven. Dr. Patel has very nicely said there is a confusion among laymen, clinical practice and clinical research. Basic thing, we use the term clinical practice. 
because doctors are practicing each patient is different each body is different and he is experimenting on well uh, not on the volunteers on patients so he is practicing this is clinical practice he develops experience and uses the established drugs this is not clinical trial clinical trial is something of a new molecule we do not know its efficacy we do not know whether it will work for the disease we do not know whether it is safe what we know is yes in pre clinical studies in animal studies in our software studies it is useful this is what is clinical research we also know what is adverse event and adverse effect if you observe an unusual event during clinical trials it is adverse event but if you observe something during clinical practice it is a side effect or an adverse effect very nicely covered sir pharmacies are best place and about emergency use let me tell you all these vaccines have been approved by various regulatory authorities for emergency use it just means that we are weighing the benefit risk ratio when the deaths are taking place in lakhs if we give this vaccine when it is found to be safe in all the three clinical trials it is going to be worthwhile therefore we have an emergency of pandemic therefore the emergency use is allowed no doubt what is expected is whether they are useful in children whether they are useful in pregnant women whether their effect like polio vaccine would last for next 10 years we will have to study for 10 years how can we say in 10 months that it will be effective in 10 years so this is what in an emergency use it does not mean that it is adverse it does not mean that it is harmful it is very effective very nicely covered very motivating talk and uh, we would like to you know have you uh, on more platforms bausaheb ji and yeah. uh, you have touched my heart being from karad and i remember my school days and those tough days everything is possible you know it only rural children those children who have great stamina can rise in life just have good discipline and stamina nobody can beat you just nobody can beat you go ahead thank you sir thank you so much. no and thank you very much i think it really means me a lot and uh, i think when i started my session i just want to repeat that uh, your self beliefs are greater than doubts of thousand other people so if you believe in something if all other people are saying you are crap you are nonsense just go ahead with it and you will achieve what you want to be i have experienced that myself so thank you very true again. sir very true very true uh dr manas i think you are on mute maybe you are saying something thank you thank you dr sir uh, uh remarks yes we always serve for the research um, yeah this have to continue for a longer period so uh, without uh, this is our tradition like uh, we want to uh, joshi sir can you please share, allow me to share the screen yeah yeah please as parli sir have uh, mentioned that we always uh, go with our traditional practice allegates to swar here and a uh, special thanks to the uh, today's speaker and the various vice presidents all the, those who have joined for this webinar just a thank you is a mighty powerful prayer says it's all for us to present a word of thanks i request dr joshi sir to join with us to present a word of thanks over to you sir uh thank you dr mansa deepa and i understand uh, it's already too late for our speaker and first of all uh, we are highly thankful to you uh, bahu sir patel sir uh, as rightly said by our guru parle sir you were uh, in your name itself there are two words right you are a brother also and you are our sahib in pharmaceutical sciences also also so on the eve of uh, you know our uh, uh, apsc webinar and more evidently today is guru purnima and uh, among all gurus you are also a guru and uh, now you are our brother also so we are highly thankful to you for sparing your wonderful and valuable time thank you yeah. so much sir thank you and uh, as you know very well uh, you know apsc is mainly committed for research nothing else 
our uh, name you know the agenda is very simple it is only research nothing else uh, we want to only talk about research or at the most about education not any other thing yeah. and uh, we have with us our guru guru of gurus uh, dr professor parley sir uh, thankful to you sir for you know your time and uh, wonderful uh, uh, you know blessings to us and we are also thankful to our very good friend a very dynamic and a leader of our pharmacy field uh, dr mahendra singh rathod a very energetic man keep on doing you know lot of activities for our pharmacy profession i am thankful to you rathod sir and again uh, you know uh, now we are also our brother we are like a family here now thank yes, you so yes, much for yes. that and vakode uh, sir uh, we will not tell you thanks first of all because uh, you know you jitna bhi bolenge utna kam hoga again very highly thankful to you sir for all your time and you know introducing uh, bau saab sir to us you know formally we have heard of, uh, about uh, saheb sir from a long time but you know you actually introduced us uh, as, you know him to us thank you so much and uh, thanks to dr cr patel who can we can see him uh, you know the epitome of pharmacology research and uh, yeah. not apart from regular uh, conventional research he is into in, he is involved in so many softwares uh, which are highly required you know for our younger generation uh, thanks to you and we will trouble you very soon vakode uh, sir is there we are going to uh, you know trouble you very soon uh, thank you uh, patel sir and uh, thanks to our friend dr deepa for the excellent moderation and you know all uh, you know making you know the uh, program very uh, useful and very attractive and uh, thanks to our uh, friend vinay and all you know the teachers who have assembled here uh, you know i am you know, i am not able to take the names of everyone uh, because you know the time is not permitting us so thank you very much for your wonderful time and once again to uh, bau saheb patel sir and let us do only one thing that is only research nothing else thank you so much i like that thank you yes uh, thank you so much sir i every time uh, we take uh, we request dr joshi sir to present the thanks but we never thanked uh, but you never mind that but so from our all our apsc team we thank you so much sir for every time you thank every one of us but it's just a, uh, since it's a guru purnima so you are the motivator of the many of the students so we want to uh, on behalf of your students the team person uh, mr vinay also behind the screen back and uh, what is uh, working for the hard uh, for all this webinar to be a great successful thank you mr vinay and uh, is uh, uh, we want to conclude uh, this session with the future uh, um, i mean webinar we all uh, are uh, i request all the delegates also join here yes the show your uh, the at the most interest again we meet you with a similar kind time we want to keep this as a whole yes we want to come with a good one so yes we'll meet in the next our webinar with us i thank on among all those who have joined for this today's webinar thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you we will we'll be in contact sir yeah thank you yeah. we will be troubling you in between not at all i like trouble getting trouble thank you <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you thank you and uh, uh, associated uh, today's uh, this webinar uh, i uh yeah i am um, see i am extremely Dean sorry Pahir, i missed uh, uh, dr arun kumaran sir uh, yes. because you know we are brothers already he is my big boss also uh, thanks to dr arun kumaran uh, and uh, thanks to the college of uh, you know the ktn college of pharmacy and mm -hmm. also sharda velas college of pharmacy students and staff who have joined here uh, I, i i think people will not mind because they are they are our family that is a formality uh, thanks to everyone uh, thank you once again i think uh, boy sab sir is getting very late Uh, yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. No, yes, thank you. you. You told sir that there is research only, nothing else. <laughs> right. So yes. there, is, there, is, there is no point yes, of yes. mining, sir. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'll okay, take a leave now. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. thank you. We'll sign off then, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.